In my presentation, I would like you to show not the modern strategy for this pathologies, but the results we obtained in preventive care. It's not a secret that esophagus aderna carcinoma is a social disease, and according to the American Association and the European Association of Oncologists, the increment of this disease is 100% each year. Here you see the positive dynamics of adenocarcinoma increment. Before, we used to have only 7 8% of esophagus cancer which was adenocarcinoma. Currently, the situation is 50-50. Adenocarcinoma is 50% of all esophagus cancers. So we were talking about the combined methods, and we see some chances here. However, esophagus adenocarcinoma is not sensitive to radiation therapy and to chemotherapy at all. Current studies uh, consider esophagus adenocarcinoma as um, squamous cell cancer, but we believe that these are different things and uh, cumulative data, both Russian and foreign, show that surgical treatment of adenocarcinoma is about 30% and uh, all patients die within three years. The result is better than with squamous cell cancer. Our Japanese colleagues use special methods And the survival rate is about 60%, which is quite significant. I'm going to talk about preventive care, sanation of esophagus. This endoscopic surgery is instrumental in repression of this adenocarcinoma spread. Starting from 1997 and until 2015, we've been treating patients in the number of 322, predominantly male, re X-ray and endoscopy is not enough for Barrett's esophagus. High-tech method will be required. Here we can use Japanese endocomplexes. In BA and Zoom, visualization and cone focal endoscopy, we have a variety of methods, so such high-tech screening will be instrumental in determining these patients at a preclinical stage. We are using all these methods in our clinic, and starting from 2008, we have improved the quality of our diagnosis of Barrett esophagus and adenocarcinoma. So we are able to detect these diseases at a much earlier stage. Barrett esophagus was represented mainly by short segments, but in some patients the length of segments was about 15-16 centimeters. We used riddle classification, dysplasia, was absent in 268 patients. The others had dysplasia. Uh, about anti-reflex operation, I can say that 
we could do this. It's my opinion. We have to prevent invasive cancer, standard endoscopy sometimes tends to miss invas invasive cancers, so we have to control the situation and we can do this. This is our own classification for buried esophagus patients. No signs of metaplasia, relapse without any reflux. We believe these results are quite appropriate and no histological signs of metaplasia. As for the uh, esophagus cancer, such results cannot be considered appropriate. We also use in endoscopic ergonoplasm coagulation. We performed it for 245 patients. Coagulator was purchased quite recently. It was quite expensive. We are using an Erba coagulator by a German company. I think that this is the most advanced coagulators of today. We performed it in combination with laparoscopic method for 228 patients. Sometimes there were concurrent pathologies which prevented us from using other methods. Before we purchased coagulator, until 2004, we used only laparoscopy. And 16 patients were fine. 12 were normal and one was inappropriate. After we removed reflux, epithelium did not regress. Before, it was considered by mistake that it could happen. And we received six patients with adenocarcinoma without any clinical signs. So there were some relapses, and we performed laparoscopic and a duplication Funda duplication again. These were male patients, 40, 50 years old. Of course, we performed esophagus resection. Unfortunately, all of these patients have died by now. And after laparoscopic funda duplication, we should not leave epithelium without any endoscopic treatment. So we p purchased this coagulator and developed our own method. First, for eight uh, weeks of uh, medicamentation treatment, then bougenage, then laparoscopic fund duplication, and then argon plasma coagulation of the whole epithelium. If it was long, ablation was uh, performed up to six times, and then only oncological dispensaries can work at the fourth stage. Uh, I mean, monitoring patients. So. We believe that these patients should be monitored throughout their lifetime and they should be checked once a year. So starting from 1997, we have been monitoring our patients. These are results of the combination of all these uh, methods. So in 10 years, we had 228 patients. So. In the majority of cases, 
adenocarcinoma risk was eliminated 78% and inappropriate result related to the reflex relapse was found in 7% of cases. So we eliminated the risk of esophagus adenocarcinoma in 100% of cases and we are able to monitor the results in 10 or 15 years after treatment. These are patients who refused from uh, uh, surgery, 63 patients in 10 years. We obtained no good results here, as you understand, taking medications throughout your lifetime is not really good. 78% uh, however did not stand the risk of uh, adenocarcinoma development. However, 22% experienced Barrett esophagus relapse and argon plasma coagulation had to be repeated. Now I'm not sure how many times we, ha we can perform electrocoagulation because it is associated with complications. So this combination of methods can be used only for patients with absolute counterindications uh, for surgery. We usually explain to our patients all the dangers associated with this method, with ablation. We try to persuade them to have surgery, but uh, extirpation of esophagus was performed only for two patients. So we actually don't have any indications uh, here, only except, except for adenocarcinoma plus uh, Barrett esophagus. So this is dynamics of Barrett esophagus increment. Here you see a continuous growth of incidence of this disease. So recently we bought this Japanese equipment and each year we are able to detect more and more patients at an early stage. This is not screening yet. We uh, don't have any economic resources uh, to screen all the population. However, our results are quite good. So how is it related to adenocarcinoma? Before, we had not had such a notion as adenocarcinoma. We had a cardioesophageal cancer, but now we are using another classification. I think that clinical experts abandoned the Zibert classification which was not really good. Now several diseases were combined into one group, which was called adenocarcinoma. Yes, Zibert 3 behaves like stomach cancer. Zibert 1 as uh, other cancer, but still we have to differentiate between different cancers so we cannot combine the Zibert classification and so still we have to be guided by this classification now but yet I divided my patients by Zibert classification I don't like the new one so this is cardioesophageal cancer first type no increment the same with the second type cardioesophageal cancer 
every year this median uh, is at the same level so adenocarcinoma is combination of these two types of cancer you see no increment here as well so i would like to finalize my presentation by words of an outstanding Russian surgeon, Pirogov. Future is preventive care, especially when we are talking about the adenocarcinoma. Thanks for your attention. Any questions? What about reflex surgery? Was it a Nissan operation? Fun duplication, yes, by Nissan. I think Nissan developed the best the best method all other methods are a la nissan however they are called differently looks like you want to confuse us why did you change the terms uh, so you have herb of surgical and non-surgical genesis. Is it a disease or is it a complication? So reflux is a phagitis, is a very narrow issue. It's a symptom. Gastroesophageal reflux disease is a pathology. I'm not confusing anyone. I'm talking about ger GERB which is based on on hernia and you also spoke about cardio is a fragile cancer it's a different notion i think it's not related to your presentation why i tried to to clarify the situation as much as possible, I'm simply trying to explain that the new TNN classification uh, does not describe adenocarcinoma correctly. I am an advocate of a Zibert classification. Yes, I agree. Zibert classification is a more sensitive one to the terms to the nature of these diseases. Thank you so much for your presentation. I have a technical question. Ablation, is it feasible to perform it after anti-reflex surgery or before? Because different clinics have different opinions. Our endoscopists believe it's better to Form it after surgery because we have to restore the anatomy. We have anatomic signs. We can dye. We can add some colorants. And just imagine heartburn and other symptoms. And we are going to burn esophagus even more. And reflux is continued. And in the Barrett disease, uh, there are some bile acids which are active. So I believe that, that first we have to eliminate clinical symptoms. Thank you very much for your uh, presentation. Um, we have all, uh, often a T1A or T1B situation in these Barrett tumors. Um, how do you deal with that? Uh, what about lymphadenectomy? Any role of laparoscopic lymphadenectomy? Any comments? Lymphadenectomy. I'm going to talk about esophageal Zibert cancer. This is a true Barrett cancer low potential for metastasing. Here we can perform dissection even bifurcation. However, in cardiovascular cancer of first type, we have to perform lymphodissection to the full extent, just uh, like in esophagus cancer. However, it's relatively benign. 
in its progression. Type 2, we have to perform the section before and the full and in zebra 3, lymphodissection of the uh, abdominal cavity. Okay. Any more questions? So, Barrett esophagus is usually associated with extra weight. So, extra after your patients change their lifestyle and diet. Did you see any positive trend in symptoms? Good question. It's interesting to study the history of esophageal cancer. There was such a philosopher, Evicenna. He described the symptoms and epidemiology, so fat people, czars, mainly emperors, uh, developed this disease more often than thin workers, ordinary people. However, if you develop Barrett esophagus, you are not going to get rid of it. It will not disappear. Vankov recently published meta-analysis and he believed that Tupac method was better. Yes, I like the Tupac method better in post-operational period. You simply have to work more using this method, Russian people are lazy. They like simple and faster methods more. Some surgeons just feel too lazy to perform such laparoscopy. That's why to pair method is not so widely used in Russia because it requires more attention, more time. Nielsen is faster. However, functional results is a serious problem. We are working on it now and I think that eventually we will opt for to pair method because we should be guided by the interests of our patients.